All right, I wanted to give you another example on using switch statements in Java. In uh, this example, I'm just going to walk you through kind of setting up a little bit more detail on how you uh, construct a, a switch. So switches are useful anytime you have different code you want to execute based on a certain condition. Uh, it starts with the word switch. And then you have the condition inside of parentheses um, needs to be a variable. So let's uh, just call it I. Start it off at zero for right now. And you put the variable that you want to switch based on inside the parentheses. After that, your curly braces for the body of your break for your switch. Then inside your switch, you'll have a bunch of case statements. Uh, these are just with the case keyword and then a, a value corresponding with the variable in the parentheses. So if I is zero and then a colon, then you can put any code that you want to happen when I is equal to zero. For instance, let's just Let's just print out that I was zero. After, uh, you can have multiple lines here. Um, for instance, then after you've got all your uh, lines that you want executed, if I is zero, then you finish it with a break statement. A break uh, exits the control statement that you're currently in. So let's put this down here. So you can see that. All right, so I'm going to run this. And you can see since I was zero, case zero happened. And you see. I was zero printed, still was zero, and then when the switch is done, uh, done with switch was printed. So let's add another case in here. Uh, let's say if uh, I is one, let's do Finish it with a break. Run this, I get the same results because I is still zero. Now, if I was one, now we see these first two statements in case zero did not execute because I was one now. And instead, I was one printed. And then the print after the, the switch. So another thing you commonly see in switch statements is a default. So the default uh, will catch anything if nothing else catches. So just put Now let's say I was 10. So I don't have a, a case statement for 10. When I run this, you can see the default was caught and the default print printed. All right, so let's make this a little bit more interesting now. Let's say uh, and another common thing to do here, you can have multiple case statements grouped together. So let's say on odd numbers, uh, we want something specific to happen. So let's say case three, case five, case seven, case nine. 
that number one and get rid of this. Let's do kind of something similar for even cases. Case two. Uh, and you can also put these on the same line to conserve space. Case four. Yeah, maybe you can't. Oh, wait, there we go. Case six. Case eight. Put in our break so we don't fall through. Put these on the same line so we can see better. Probably not the best style, but whatever looks best. Uh, oftentimes, I, I consider good style. So, and then. Instead of doing this just with one I value, let's loop. Go beyond 10, or let's go through 10, so plus. All right, so running this. Now we can see kind of switches back and forth since we're incrementing. So when first time in the loop, I was zero. We see case zero caught, I was zero printed. Nothing else, because we got the done with the switch statement down here printed. The loop then executed a second time with I equals one, in which case, this did not execute. Case one is right here, so the number was odd printed, and that was it. Uh, done with the switch, and then I was incremented to two, in which case this case caught it here. The number was even printed, then the done with switch, and so on. All the way down the very last one you can see when i was equal to 10 last time through the loop uh, none of the cases were caught and the default was caught instead <laughs>